So, I don't need to start explaining or describing what our body looks like. Or I don't need to start showing you. I don't need to start showing you what the body looks like. So, but money, right? Money is everything. Money is anything that is generally acceptable. Money is anything that is generally acceptable. And means of payments. Money is anything that is generally acceptable as a means of payment, as a medium of exchange, as a medium of exchange and settlement of debt. Money is anything that is generally acceptable as a means of payment, as a medium of exchange and settlement of debt. Now, let me give you an instance. Why do I say money is a means of payment? You go to um, any market now, not to buy some money. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, those of you that are online? I can't hear anybody. Can you hear me? Yes. What have I been talking about since? Eh? Yeah, I can hear you. I can't hear you. What have I been talking about since? I've started thinking since. So, of yeah? Definition of money. Oh, that's good. So, like I said earlier, I said, um, why do we say money is a means of payment? Now, when you want to go and buy something, of course, you're going to exchange, or you're not going to give money as a payment for buying that that lot of exactly that's one then why why is the money is a medium of exchange when you go to the market you guys are distracting people to go this way now when you go to the market and you want to get pepe or you want to get fish or anything for you to get that fish you have to give you have to give money okay so that's how money is what is a medium of exchange you are exchanging money for the work for the fish and the fish seller is exchanging the fish for the words for the money. So that money and money. The last one is money and settlement of debt. Where you are owing uh, people, of course, you need money what, to settle up with them. So I believe that explanation or that definition is very clear. All right. Now, let's talk about the characteristics of money characteristics of money. I've been able to break down the definitions of money. So if you are asked to define money or explain money, to be able to break down the definitions of money as well. Okay. It's not just for you to just give the explanation but break down the explanation. Why is it uh, a means of payment? Why is it a medium of exchange? And why is it a what? A settlement of debt. Okay, for those of you that are just joining me, I said I've divided money, I've written money, and I have broken down the definitions of money. I've explained why money is a means of payment, I've explained why money is a means of exchange. At the same time, I've explained why money is a what? It's used as settlement of what? Settlement of debt. So now we're talking about the characteristics of money. Oh, general acceptability. General acceptability, general acceptability, characteristics of money, general acceptability. Exactly. Are you with me, those of you there? Are you with me, those of you online? Yes, sir. Yes. 
general acceptability is one characteristic of money. Now, any item that serves as money, any item that serves as money, any item that serves as money must be generally acceptable. Any item that serves as money must be what? Generally acceptable. Now, money should not be something that will be accepted in Kofu State and is not accepted in what? In Ogi State. Should not be something that is accepted in what? In Ogi State and it's not accepted in what? In uh, your State. So, any item that serves as money must be generally acceptable. That is, when you spend it here, it must be spent in another world, in another state. It must be spent in another world, in another state. So it must be generally accepted. Everybody must be able to what? Accept it. So when I give 100 naira here, when I give 100 naira in your state, and they accept it, they should accept the same 100 naira in what? In Kano state. Any idea that some of money must be generally accepted. Number two, recognizability. Recognizability. Okay. Are we together? Are those of you that are online there? Okay. Recognizability. Any item that serves as money, any item that serves as money must be easily recognized. Must be what? Easily recognized. Any item that serves as money must be easily recognized. You realize that there is nobody here that will see money that will not be able to what? Identify or recognize that this is money. I cannot raise this up now. Now there, this is money. I want to buy a uh, fried rice. They are giving me why because I've been able to watch, I've been able to recognize the item that you have seen must be recognized. No, that's what exactly. Yes, you're online there exactly. Right. Yes, sir. Portability. Portability. Those of you, I'm sure you have heard of the word portable. 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 Okay. Portability. Any item that serves as money. Any item that serves as money. Any item that serves as money must be easily carried about. Any item that serves as what? As money must be easily carried about. It must be that item that you can easily what? Carry about. You can carry from one place to another what? Another place. Are we together? We, we can't say, okay, now we're going to say this is 100 naira. 100 naira is as big as this board like this. You understand? You want to spend 100 naira, say that this is 100 naira. You want to buy, you want to buy uh, something of 100 naira. You know, it's not possible. So it must be something that you can easily want to carry about. In the sense that if you have, uh, if I have 5,000 in my pocket now, I should be able to want to carry it about. Are we together? As we to carry it from one place to another. Now, number four, we go. Number four is divisibility. 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 Any item that serves as money, any item that serves as money, I tell, are you with me? Okay. I'm sure you guys are with me, right? Okay. So any item that serves as money 
was the capable of being splitted. Splitted was the capable of being, of being splitted. Any item that serves as money must be capable of being splitted into different categories. Into different categories. Any item that serves as money must be capable of being splitted into different categories. For example, if I want to divide 100 naira, yes, if I want to divide what you like, if I want to divide 100 naira and I want to divide it into two, then I'll have how many 15 naira? I'll have two 15 naira. If I want to divide it into 20 naira, I'll have how many 15 naira? I'll have five. What about 10 naira? I'll have one. Okay, so any item that serves as money must be capable of being what? Of being di divided or split into different words, into different categories. I hope that's clear. Now, last one, number five. You know the last one, there are so many, so many uh, characteristics of money. But I will, I will give you two. Number five, relatively scarce. Relatively scarce. Any item that serves as money, any item that serves as money, must, any item that serves as money, any item that serves as money, must not be too much in supply. Any item that serves as money must not be too much in what? In supply, so that, so that, so that it will not lose its value. So that it will not lose its value. Relatively scarce characteristic of money. See that any item that serves as money must not be too much in what? In supply so that it will not lose its value. Now, you, you agree with me that when there are too much of money in supply, there would be inflation, okay? And when there is inflation, money tends to lose its value. Because when there are too much of money in supply, when we have so many money in supply, you have money, so go here, it's not in there, go here, it's not in there, it's not in there, it's not in there. I realize that goods will be what? Will be very, very cost. There will be a lot of what? Costly products. Because there are too much of money, what? Too much of money in supply. So it must not be too much in supply so that the money will not work, will not lose its value. So that's it. That's one card. Then last one is homogeneity. 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 Now, let me ask you is there any difference between? Homogeneity and heterogeneity. What's the difference between homogeneity and yes? Yes, what's the difference? difference. Homogeneity has the same face, why heterogeneity has different faces. Homogeneity means the same, why heterogeneity means the same. Homo means same, why? Different now. Last the last advice of noise is what homogeneity that is any item that serves as money must be the same thing. Any item that serves money must be the same, it must be the same within the national boundary. Any item that serves as money must be the same within the national boundary. We should not be spending black on the Nera in Kano State and they're not spending red in Oyo State. We should not be spending white uh, on the Nera in Lagos State. We should not be spending white uh, 15 Nera in Oshu State and they're spending blue in Abuja. So any item that serves as money will be the same. It must be exactly the same thing within the national national boundary. 
I would ask Claire. Must be exactly the same. Difference. It must be the same in size. It must be the same in what? It must be of the same size, of the same color, the same design, of the same material within the national boundary. And that's, that's for the characteristics of the We have thousands of them. Now, talk about the motive. No, we won't talk about the motive. Let's talk about the demand for money. 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 Before now, I taught you demand. I explained to you that demand is what the amount of goods and services that the consumer is willing, not just willing, and what and to, to buy at different prices and at a particular period. So now we're talking about demand for money. What do you understand by demand for money? Demand for money is desire. Demand for money is desire to hold money. Demand for money is the desire of money. Demand for money is the desire to hold money. Now, you now have to hold it. Why do people hold money? Why do people hold it? You can say, why do people hold or demand for money? Why do people hold or demand for money? Now, if you don't, you don't write like this, you can say, for holding motives, for holding money. There are some questions that come like, what are the reasons for this? They are still saying the same thing. Motive, that's why it's going to be like this. Motives for what? Again, they will ask you reasons for what? Motives for holding money. What are the reasons why for holding money? Now, that's it. We started with demand for money. The desire for money. Now, people are holding money. Why? People are holding money for some certain reasons. So, what's talk about why people are holding money? For one, people are holding money for transactionary motive. Transactionary. Transactionary. Larry motive. Transactionary motive for holding money. People are holding money for, for transactional money. Why are people holding money on that transactional Why are people holding money on that transactional motive? Are we together? So why are people holding money for transactional People are holding money for transactional Right. People are holding money for transactionary motive, needs of day to day activities. People are holding money for transactional motive. To be able to what? To be able to meet up with what? With day to day activities. For example, buying or chewing gum. Chewing gum. I could decide to hold my money. Ah. If I see a super secret, I'll buy it. Buying of sweets, buying of sweets, buying of sweets, or a bad and some other things. You can hold your money so that you can buy what you can be able to buy some, some things. Whether you're going on the road, just buy. Buy ice cream, not buy this, not buy some. The reason that reason transactionary motive, 
Number two is precautionary motive. Precautionary. Precautionary motive. Don't forget, we're talking about people old money. Why? You see that people are holding money. People are holding money for yes. transactionary motive. Be able to work to meet all the day to day activities. I want to buy people. I want to buy some more. I want to buy some of a life. I want to buy more money. About you is what? Precautionary motive. People are holding money. People are holding money to meet up with all the same step of state. People are holding money to meet up with what? With all the same circumstances. Or, or future emergence unforeseen circumstances or, or future emergencies unforeseen circumstances or future emergencies I'm holding my money because I know that I am I am holding my money because I know I might I know I might die one day. So now, holding that, that is for holding money. Because I might be doing it. I'm going on the way now. What could you do? Straight up. Just down my enemy. Just down my enemy. So down my enemy. Okay. If I am holding that money, that is all for circumstances. Number three is speculative motive. Ah, those of you that are online, are you with me? Are you with me? Yes, sir. Is there anybody that is lost? Eh? Okay. So now, speculative motive. Old money on that speculative motive to perform business transactions. People old money on that speculative motive to be able to work perform business transactions. For the sake of what? Profitability. This speculative motive. Uh, okay. This speculative motive. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, my brother. I kind of great in right. What about now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Now I was talking about speculative motive. I said it's a type, it's a motive of holding money for for business purpose or for, for what it's making. Okay, yeah. And I said it is divided into a into two. For example, I have my money with me now, and I'm expecting that you know, I borrow that money. If you borrow that money, I will put into it. If you are going to understand, so that's the political motive for us holding money. And at the same time, I can see that ah, there will be inflation in the future. You understand? So, or there will be deflation in the future. So I can just put back my money, and when inflation comes, I go I buy. You understand? So basically, speculative motive for holding money. Yeah. 
basically the basic money motive for holding money is for making. So you are holding money and you are people borrow money from you and you are returning back the money. So this is holding money. Okay, so I think we should be shutting down now. Is there any question? I cannot hear you. Now, someone has asked me that why do we have different currencies? Now we are talking about money as money within. I can hear you. Someone is asking me now that why do we have different currencies? If the characteristics of money says homogeneity, right? That is, it must be the same. But we are talking about money within a particular. I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? I cannot hear you. How are you now hearing? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? I cannot hear you. Who is that person? Who is that person? What's your name? I cannot hear you. What is your name? <laughs> What's your name? What was the name of your device? Okay, decent. Can you hear me now? Yes, Vincent. Can you hear me now? Any other any other good question? Any other question to me? Have you joined? A three says what? The first one, I said the first one, I the value of money. Second one, I the velocity of money. Number three, write a letter to your uncle abroad. Your uncle is not abroad. Not to be, okay? That's why I said abroad. Write a letter to your uncle abroad or village stating why you choose to talk for money in your hand. <laughs> 